Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to uh, show you how I'm going to be continuing on our midterm by unwrapping uh, the first model that I created on my own and texturing it as well. So this one's a little bit different because it's uh, a number of different objects. Um, but just a side note real quick, make sure that um, we're in week six here. So you need to start um, really uh, diving into this and getting uh, some more models done, um, at least begin working on them because uh, week eight, our midterm is due. So going back uh, on here, um, basically just you know create a model, unwrap it, texture it, and make sure you follow all the requirements. Um, so I'm just going to show you how I unwrap this one in this video. And um, I'll go ahead and the first thing I'm going to do is highlight this entire all the objects on here I'm also gonna do an edit delete all by type history real quick just so I get rid of anything I had in here and let me just see so you'll see that I've got a bunch of little stuff in here so I'm just gonna do edit delete all by type history and all that stuff disappears now with all of this highlighted I'm gonna combine the object and I could also see it says poly unite I can do that one more time just to kinda of clear it out and start from scratch in my attribute editor okay so now that I've got this object all combined I can still sort of separate them easily as I unwrap it by going into my face mode and just double clicking one object at a time and you'll see that I highlighted just this because these are just the individual objects by themselves so basically um, we've been doing uh, I've shown you pretty much every way to unwrap now and I'm just gonna go ahead and use all the different methods because I think we've covered all of them up to this point. So basically on all of these oh, and I might have to double click each one of these individual uh, individually holding shift and the reason I'm doing this is to make sure I select all the faces on every side. So I've selected all the faces. I'm going to press Shift I just to show you, and that's to isolate. And if you ever want to deselect and exit isolate mode, press Shift I again. But I'm going to undo that so I can have my objects selected. And these objects, because they're just all cubes basically, just scaled, I'm going to hold space and I'm going to use an automatic unwrap on this. And actually, even before I do that, select my object and let me show you what it looks like in the Persp. UV editor. So I have tons of faces here overlapping one another. Um, this one's all reversed here and that's because it's an ex extrude. So I'm going to do these one at a time. I'm going to see if I can go back really quickly and just make sure that I have just the faces I want selected. I do. Almost. Okay. So I just held shift double click this one and then uh, press shift I once more so now I have all of these selected and I'm gonna just run an automatic UV unwrap on these and you're gonna see they all unwrap here and I have all of these over here and I'm just gonna try to um, come back to I'm gonna have to come back to these at some point let me see if I can tools move UV shell tool and see if I can shift a lot of this stuff out of the way before I even begin to sort of make it easier visually to get started and a great way to get started um, in case you run into something like this because I have a bunch of stuff in here there we go there we go Tools, move UV shell tool. I might have to do this 
one at a time and you'll see how many faces are just like overlapping one another and see if I can select them all sort of at the same time and I was able to and using the arrows in scenarios like that seemed to work better I grabbed almost all of them and tools move UV shell tool and I'm just trying to knock these out of the way so you can see how I unwrap these uh, as I push forward on this okay alright so this is all of those um, all of these shapes here and I'm in isolate mode that's why you see all these sort of transparent objects with the UV shaded display on so I know that these are all of the move UV show uh, objects that I need so these ones I'm gonna just shift out of the way and if I haven't already mentioned it already it is a great way to just sort of start with a UV automatic so you can avoid that in case you're struggling with it uh, UV automatic and it'll unwrap everything kind of cleanly for you, but I'm just going to show you how I do it. And I just undid all of that uh, to get me back to this point. So now I can go ahead and I've shown you how to cylindrical unwrap. And I'm going to isolate this one. And I'm just going to enter this viewport here. And I'm going to start to unwrap just sort of the larger parts I guess for now and this one I'm just selecting all of the sort of top parts of it and I'm just gonna run a camera based I could run a planar or best plane but I'm just gonna run a camera based and now I know this is this one and I'm gonna continue unwrapping this one all the way to the bottom and in this video I think I'm gonna actually show you uh, I'll show you yeah I'll just continue the way we've been doing it I'm gonna um, I'll, I'll show you a quick way to a different me maybe method if you will how to unwrap this if I haven't already showed you uh, I'm gonna just hold spacebar I'm gonna do another camera based now this is where it kinda gets confusing for students so if I hit tools and move UV shell tool you'll notice I have this you know these uh, inverted normals or whatever flip normals and it's because they're overlapping and it's totally all the way around now the best way to kind of do this is I'm gonna go to edge and I'm gonna select this edge directly in the center of the back of this model because this is where my seam will be and I'm holding shift as I select these edges and I want to show you something really neat really quickly and if I now if you think about this as like a sleeve of a shirt right like a cloth sleeve and sort of where the cap was at the top here this bold line whoops this bold line this is where sort of let's just pretend the sleeve of your shirt is so if you're looking at your sleeve right here that's sort of the cap of it so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cut down the middle of this because right now it's one solid uh, closed one where it's basically stitched down the seam and on your shirt it would be stitched all the way down so I'm gonna go to cut sew and do cut or shift X and now what you're gonna notice is I have a bright white line coming down in my viewport and what that signifies to me is that this is where the seam is located now and now that I've cut down that and basically around the top I know tools move UV shell tool I'm gonna to select this and I'm gonna do the you know the tools show UV toolkit and I'm gonna go over here and under unfold I'm gonna click unfold and you're gonna see how it sort of just if you had this piece of paper that you know you had scotch taped together in a cylinder then you unscotched it you know a, a cut piece of paper in this shape and you um, unscotched the tape after it was in the cylinder and laid it flat this is what it would look like so that's another uh, analogy that I can give to you so you'll see I've got the top and the bottom of it unwrapped and that's a really good sign so 
because now I have no red facing um, uh, normals and that's a good thing. So now I've got two of my key parts unwrapped. I've got all of these and then this entire thing. So the next thing I'll do, I guess the next easiest one would be this one right here. And this one I'm just going to use an automatic UV automatic because it's in the shape of a cube. I'll do tools move UV shell toolkit or tools move UV shell tool and it's not letting me sort of I'm holding shift as I select these. And I'm just going to drag these oh, over and I'm going to try to keep them all together so I don't sort of lose track. Now these are the bolts I believe on my these are definitely the bolts and that's these right here they're already highlighted in green you see so these I can keep together also so those are basically unwrapped and I also need to do the sides of them so I'll start with the first one this one's really easy I'm gonna do that camera based UV camera based UV or UV, yeah, UV camera base, there it is. And now it's looking all weird, so if I do it at an angle over here, you'll see it does it directly from the camera. You see how I have the same angle here? It's the same angle here. So I'm gonna uh, just flip underneath it, because this is probably the least likely place it's gonna be, or maybe the top of it, I don't know. I'll, I'll, un, un, I'll cut the seam at the top. So I'm just selecting the top edge. I'm gonna go cut and cut and then tools, move UV shell toolkit, I'm going to select it. You'll notice how that line becomes a bright white because that's where my seam is and then I'm just going to click unfold. And that's how that were to unfold if you just, you know, if it was wrapped in a cylindrical scotch tape at one point, you undo the scotch tape and lay it flat, that's what it would look like. Okay, so there's another one. Do the same thing down here. And I'm really kind of almost done with this. Um, UV camera based and then I'm going to cut select my edge mode and cut this one and now I'm going to go tools move UV shell tool select it and click on fold and just drag that one out of the way and all these I can sort of keep over here with it okay and then I'm left with this object. Oh, I'm also left with this one. So I'll do this one first because this one, uh, I'll save that one for last actually, excuse me, because that's the going to probably be the most difficult one in a way, but not really. So um, basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select all these faces. I'm going to go shift I just so you, you can see it better. Tap F on my keyboard to zoom in on that object. And now that I've got this, I'm not going to go ahead and do like all that camera based and cut edges and all that because a lot of it's sort of in a way um, done for me because I've got the cylind these cylinders up here. And I know the tops, these are either the tops or the uh, the. It, they're either, two of them are the, either this object at top because they're the identical objects or this object at the bottom. So that's f all good, but the one thing I do want to take care of is this here. And you'll see it's actually already down here. So maybe if I'm lucky, I can move UV shell tool and just do unfold. And it almost worked exactly how I wanted it to, except I have some strange thing going on down here. So I might have to do it the way I originally planned. And unfortunately, I'm just going to start to select these faces around. I'm holding shift and double clicking. And I'm just going to run a UV camera based. And you'll see it's right over here. 
and I'm just gonna do a tools move UV shell tool and just click unfold and then just drag that over here and now I've got this one goes with this this one goes with this and I can tell because it highlights green on the mesh itself and now with these objects here I'm gonna run a UV automatic because that's all sort of rectangular and go to tools move UV shell tool and just highlight all of these and drag them using the arrows because they seem to stay better that way um, and now I've got that entire thing selected so the next thing I'm gonna do is the one on the bottom oh it's because I'm in isolate mode I'm gonna tap shift I and go into face and just zoom in I'm gonna double click all these faces and shift I again and I know I have these two completed so I know these two are gonna be going over here somewhere I know this is gonna be the polytorus I believe I can't see it because I'm in isolate mode but I'm pretty sure it is and I'm gonna run the same thing I did last time I'm gonna select this face and just all the way up to this point where right before where it turns red and UV camera based and tools move UV shell tool select it and click unfold and now I know that goes here and then like uh, I did with the other one I'm just gonna highlight all of these and UV automatic and now I can use my UV tools move UV shell select all these objects and just use the arrow tools they seem to work stay together stay together more cleanly that way and what are these ah okay and now I have just my one last object here which is this part here so which I was right it's this big cube looking thing here and basically what I'm gonna do with this object doesn't look like this one I'll come back to that I'm gonna select this entire object and then this one's tricky um, but what I could do is first of all you can try to go tools move UV shell tool select it and then just click unfold and that's actually what I'm gonna leave it at I think that's perfect and what it did was it's got a seam if you just look at the seam on here it has a seam running inside of it all the way around and one seam running around it this way so that just saved me a whole lot of extra steps and then back to these cubes for whatever reason they didn't all Gets selected properly so I'm just gonna run this one one more time and if they did it's I'll show you another trick I just want to double check and shift I because I know last time I thought I had selected everything alright so I'm gonna go UV one more time and do automatic because these are all basically cubes and in here you see a couple of these so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this arrow tool and then go into my face mode and select the faces I believe hold on try move UV shell toolkit I'm, I'm gonna do this thing called modify and flip now you're gonna see it flips both of them which is strange so ah there we go so before I do all that and I I, it, I was getting a little ahead of myself on that so I'm just gonna hi highlight all of these one more time and I'm just gonna click unfold and now those certain ones for whatever reason unfolded just like so now that I've got the entire object unfolded or unwrapped properly I'm gonna go into tools and or uh, excuse me modify and I'm gonna go to layout and I'm gonna click the little settings box and I'm gonna do uniform scale mode uniform and that's all fine 
And if you don't remember, uh, go to Windows, Settings, Preferences, Plugin Manager, and make sure your UV uh, Unfold 3D, there we go, Unfold 3D is loaded, auto load, and click refresh and close. And then I'm just going to click Layout UVs here, uh, making sure I have Scale Mode on Uniform. Click that. And now I'm just going to go ahead and zoom in. And like I did with the cube, I don't like the way it always uh, lays everything out. So I'm going to try to unfold this one more time. Eh, didn't really do much. So I don't like the way it laid everything basically out. So I'm going to try to lay out, unfold along U or unfold along V just to see if I get any. Or just unfold. Just clicking unfold works the best. Um, let's see if I can play around with some of these arrange and layout. And I'm going to try layout along V and just click that and see what happens. And that does not work well. And maybe U. And that did not work well either. So I was hoping I would get a little bit better results with that, but I didn't. And the one thing to try to make sure it's um, pretty important. Um, assign new material and I'm just going to assign a Lambert for this and I'm going to do edit delete all by type history and now under Lambert 2 I'm going to call this checker torch material and then under color I'm going to click my little uh, checker box there and I'm going to go over here and click my checker box here and I'm going to press 6 in my viewport to display it and I'm going to select this object, the entire thing. And I'm going to go to Tools, Move UV Shell Tool, highlight all of these, and scale it larger. And you should have all of these UVs be the same size squares. They should all be give or take approximately. So the larger you see, uh, scale it, you can pretty much tell that they're all give or take approximately the same size. And I'm totally cool with that. And I'm going to leave that. Um, as is. So I just double check it by scaling it. Now I'm just going to undo it and put it back into place. So a couple things you can do I'm going to turn off my checkerboard to sort of expedite the process during texturing is if I go into my tools and move UV shell tool if I can highlight and sort of separate these objects from the rest of the playing field basically um, it'll be much easier for me when I go to texture later uh, I'm just trying to highlight all of these objects there we go And I'm just going to rearrange them just so I can get a slightly better fit. And if you have to, you can always do sort of this tools, move UV shell tool, and just move one of these at a time. And you can even rotate it also, pressing E on the keyboard. And just make sure you're in tools, move UV shell tool. And I'm not so concerned about all of these being perfect, but when I get into texturing, I'm going to just pretty much drop a whole bunch of metal textures on this stuff. Um, and I may even just drop one over the entire thing for ease, but... Not entirely. Like, I would like these to be somewhat of a different metal. Oop, didn't mean to do that. Than other parts. And other parts I'd like to have, come on. I'd like to have, um, you know, like in the top part, uh, this part right here, I'd like that part to have like a burnt look to it, as if it actually burned, you know. Um, as if it actually burned you know wood or whatever they used back then kerosene or something um, 
to give it that sort of grungier look where the fire has burned. And this is just, um, these are just things that are super important, especially if you're uh, really serious about getting into the industry of 3D modeling and, and game design and 3D art and stuff like that. Whatever you want to do with this, this is extremely imperative to know is that creating good UVs is really important. And as you get better, these UVs will be much, much better. Um, if I were doing this a little bit and, and not trying to give you um, give you more of a simplified version of this, I would actually rescale all of these uh, by hand um, uniformly up to this point and then re fit them in here just like a puzzle and try to get it to maximize the space I have in here so I can maximize my texture space um, and get the highest possible quality texture out of this and if I have to move these last couple ones one at a time so be it let's see if I can grab a bunch at a time and let's go here Okay, and I just have like one more here maybe. Okay, and then I guess for these nuts and bolts, I'll kind of just space these out a little bit better. And I'm just trying to put everything I know that's sort of the same thing in the same regions to just make sure that I kind of apply the same textures to these. This one, no. Oh, this one I can actually bring up here. I know this one goes up here. And like I said, I would really be trying to fit these much better and have them all scaled, prob probably larger um, tools, move UV shell tool. And I'm just going to go ahead and get these going. tools if you ever run into this tools move UV shell tool and this is just going to help me at the end of this because this is this is actually a lot of different objects um, in here and these are all the caps too so I'm just going to scooch this out of the way for the moment just so I can grab all of these and sort of put them over here with the rest of these objects. And there's so much going on. Um, and if this isn't absolutely perfect, I'm not going to go I just selected and then deselected that just so Okay. And this one, oh, I think is going to be the same as this one. Okay. See what that is. Oh, okay. And this one is probably one of the bolts, I'm guessing. Yep. And this one probably is also. Yep. And then, what is this one? Okay. So, this, these are all basically the same. I can kind of sort those together. Tools, move UV shell tool.
tools, move UV shell tool. And then this one goes over here. And this one also goes over there. And I'm just shifting these all out of the way. I know this is sort of tedious, but it's definitely going to help me in the long run here. Bring that up. Okay. And now. going to rotate this around just clearing up a little bit more space here all right and then that's the back piece okay perfect so I've got my UVs I mean I could potentially you know utilize the space better but I'm not going for perfection right now and I think that would be a little asking a little too much but I would like to see something similar uh, to this where um, I'll pr turn on my checkerboard one more time. Here we go. Just to make sure I'm all inside of the UVs. I would like to see something similar to this. Um, and now I'm going to show you how I would texture it. So for this object, I'm not going to, I would really like to use the. I guess I'll try and do it. I'll, I'll do it. Um, I'm going to use Photoshop and I'm going to texture this using the projection texturing method. And I'm going to go ahead and on. Let me go over here. CG textures. So. I'm just going to go back to Maya real quick. So over here, I'm going to export this as an OBJ. So um, you have to make sure you have your OBJ on. So Windows Settings Preferences, Plugin Manager. And then it's going to be in alphabetical order. Just OBJ export right here. Loaded, auto load, refresh, and then close. And now I can do, I'm going to select my arrow tool. Go to Object and select the object and do File, Export Selection. And over here, I'll just leave it in here. Um, I'm going to call this uh, da, 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 torch. Torch. That's fine. Underscore midterm. All right. And then export. Everything else is fine. Make sure it's an OBJ. And go ahead and hit export selection. Now in Photoshop, I'm going to go ahead and do op file open. Now the cool part about doing this is that you don't need to export your UVs if you don't want to because it's going to be attached to the object. So I'm going to file open in Photoshop and I'm going to go ahead and click on midterm.obj and click open. In here um, I'm going to go I don't know why it always does this but I'm going to go 2048 by 2048 on width and height by pixels in here and then I'm just going to click OK. Just a second. Now it says you are about to switch, uh, about to create a 3D layer. Would you like to switch to the 3D workspace? Click yes. Now in here, I've got my object, and if you remember from before in my diffuse under Lambert 2SG, I'm going to double click on this, and you're going to see I've got my UVs in here ready to go so um, it's pretty cool so now I'm just gonna gather some textures um, I'll do uh, I don't know metal Let's see what comes up and I'm gonna see if I can find something a little bit more grungy or something like that um,
if possible. And I'm just looking through these ones. They're just a little bit nicer if you can find them, typically. Plus, the, if you if you can figure out how to utilize the normal map on it and all that stuff, it comes with you know all these different maps and stuff. But I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down here and see what else we got in the flat images, and see if I can find anything. Now I don't see anything yet. This one's pretty cool, but I'm going to hold off on that thought just for a second. I'm going to go to metal and then I'm going to see if they have some kind of grungy sort of not galvanized leaking scratch seams welds bear let's try bear I do like this. This is about four different types of metal in here. Let's see if they're all separate or if it's just one flat image. So they do separate in here. Um, I like the way these all sort of look. They have that wear and tear on it and things like that. So uh, so I'm going to download this one. I think this one's pretty cool. I like the ones that have a lot of this. It, this wear and tear. This one's actually pretty neat. So I'm going to go with this one and I'm just going to download that. And I'm just say, uh, placing this in my folder that I would like it to be in. Okay, and I'll save it right here. And I feel like I could really just use a couple of these. I'll just use this one too. I don't want to, you know, strain out too much, but I would like to use a variety of different ones if possible. And show in folder. This one's just going to be a cut because I already have the other folder open and paste. All right, so I'll use a combination of both of those because I know it's got to be some kind of metal. It can't really be made out of wood because the entire thing would burn out, right? So it's got to be some kind of metal. And in here, I'm just going to go to File, Open, and I'm going to go ahead and open up the two different ones here. Click Open. That should give me enough variety to kind of mess around with this. So I'm going to go Control A, Control C, and I'm going to go back over here to my Lambert and Control V. And I'm going to control T to edit transform and hold shift to rotate. And now I'm just going to sort of shift this into place over here because I know this is going to be the largest part on it. And if you were watching one of the other uh, ones I was doing, uh, I think it's like mid midterm, con continue midterm, week four or five, I don't know, where I'm. Uh, texturing the bookshelf and I keep saving out a file and then re and then reloading it in Maya I skip a whole step by switching between softwares on this and on here I'm just gonna go ahead and um, I could do something cooler uh, if I'd like I'm gonna do layer layer mask and reveal all and I'm gonna use my marquee tool to sort of separate these I'm gonna press G it only has the 3D drop tool. So I'll use my brush tool and just increase the size. That'll work. And I'm going to switch the color to black, I believe. Yep. And I'm just going to hide that. I'm going to go back to my marquee tool and use my brush tool, tapping B on the keyboard, and just paint that out also. And now, if I ever want to go back and paint it back in, I switch to white and there it is so I always have that option to go back in case I'd like to which is such a great useful technique to um, utilize so here I'm gonna click back on my torch midterm I'm gonna click on my arrow tool here and I'm just gonna swing around and I can't see it too well so I wanna show you a cool little trick you see this little light here it says infinite light 
Let me. It says infinite light. I'm going to click on that, and you're going to see this little weird spherical, half sphere shape come in here. And I'm going to go ahead and just click on that and rotate to an angle that works well for me. And then you see that it self shadows too, which is great. And then I'm gonna just, I'm gonna bring it off to the side because I wanna be able to see everything. And now to get off of this light, I'm gonna double click off of that, um, just off the screen basically in, in the viewport. And now I can go back to rotating around. And I think that's starting to look pretty cool. So I got my object there. Now I could get some, uh, I wanted to use a variety of different metals because I want it to sort of look really neat. Now um, I'm going to go back in my Lambert 2 here and I'm going to zoom in and now I have this part of my torch and I'm going to create a new layer here sh momentarily and I'll rename this one to back uh, base back base so now I can sort of go back. And now I'm going to take this one. I'm going to control A, control C, come back over here and press control V and then control T and rotate it and zoom out. And now I'm just going to scale this one into place to sort of match. Let's do this one. I feel like this one might look pretty cool with that. Now I'm not getting too concerned with my seams and stuff because it's just not uh, oh, I'm going to have to make it a little bit bigger control T and just scale it up a little bit more and there we go and I feel like that would give a pretty cool look to it and I'm going to go ahead and do my layer layer mask reveal all and then switch to my black color and yeah it's fine I'm, I'm not gonna be too particular with this and actually I wanna make it even bigger because I think that'll work better okay now I'm gonna click back on my masking layer here and just paint this stuff out And I'm going to come back around. Come back around. I'm not making this perfectly around this. I'm not too concerned about perfection. But I do want to make sure I'm doing each one of these. So. something like that and this will be I don't know torch base so I also need to get oh because it's triangulated it looks a lot different uh, I'm gonna go back over here and you're gonna see now I've got the a separate metal texture and it things just start to get looking so way too repetitive if you constantly are using um, the same material on everything. So now that I've got that taken care of, I'm going to take care of the top and I'm going to need to rotate my light so I get a little bit better double click off of what I'm going to be looking at at the top. And then here um, I can find like a really grungy spot that I like and I'm going to press control D to deselect and I feel like this spot right here would be perfect for it and I'm hoping it's a large enough selection but if not I'll show you a cool little trick and I'm just gonna highlight this control C come back over here and then paste it I held uh, control shift V that time to paste in place and now I'm gonna control T this and just sort of because it has that really cool little burn look to it I think that might be a good one to use here and then again I'm gonna go to layer layer mask and reveal all and using my brush I'm just gonna paint out some of that stuff oh I gotta 
to come back here and make sure everything fits right. Ah. Enter. I'm just going to control Z that and paint back in. Ooh. Make sure I'm on the right layer using my white. I'm going to paint some of the stuff back in just so I can get reposition it a little bit better. Because I really want to use as much of this sort of burnt esque look to it as possible. That's better. And now I'm going to switch back to my layer mask, use my brush tool, switch to black, and come around. And it's probably really just rust, but it gives it a little bit more with that reddish color that, oh yeah, it's been sort of burned before. So um, just an idea on how to do this. So I have this one last little part that I want to finish off, and I keep <laughs> missing this corner, and it's starting to bother me. So I'm going to use something new. Uh, this is the... I'm going to use the clone stamp tool. It's right here, this little clone stamp. And on my layer, I'm going to just hold Alt and click a spot over here, and then I'm just going to paint it in. That's good enough. And basically all it does is it uh, you're grabbing a color from here, and let's just say if I go over here, it'll paint it directly on it, just to show you the exact thing, because it's a clone of that those that uh, spot by holding alt and clicking you see the little target that comes up then you release and you can paint really anywhere so anyway I'm gonna make sure I didn't break that and I didn't and you'll see I get a little bit more of that look that I was going for I can zoom in I wanted to have that sort of rustic look you'll see it better in Maya but this is definitely a great way place to start and I've already really textured a lot of this already. So now I'm going to get back into over here. And I'm not really projecting anything on this, but I am able to update it live, which is really neat. This entire section here, I'm going to literally just use um, one metal because you'll never be able to tell uh, because it's just such oh, a... There's such small objects. So I'm just copying this image. Or maybe I'll control D. I'll copy this one, control A, control C. And then back over here, whoops, and here, control V. Now control T. And I'm going to just actually, I might not have to zoom. Oh, yeah. I'm going to zoom out. And I'm going to. Just make this big enough to cover all that stuff. And I'm going to press enter. And this one is going to be uh, uh, Torch uh, Pro. Uh, it's like the torch fence because it's keeping sort of protecting you from it. And now on this I'll use my layer, layer mask, reveal all. I'll use my marquee tool to sort of just select the bottom part of this out as much as I can. And then I'm gonna switch to black, use my brush tool, and I'm just gonna paint that out. And then press control D. And I think I got enough to get all that off. Yep, I did. Now I'm going to come back over here, see what it looks like. And now you're going to see I got a variety of different little things on that going on. All right, so um, the last part, I have the, the little nuts here holding it into place or bolts, whatever you want to call it. So this part here, I also want to have that grungy sort of burn look. And on this one, I'm kind of want it. Oh, to have more of this action happening. All this sort of burnt. I know it's just like a metal, uh, just that uh, sort of rusted metal. But 
I'll use my marquee tool really quickly. And then B. And then paint that out. Control D. And I'll even, just to make sure, make sure I get out of this region. And just so I know, something like that. Okay. So I'll come back over here, and that refreshed, and now I'll see if I can get a better sort of angle on it. And I'm getting all these different looks to them, and I, I think that's great. That's what I'm going to go for. I'm, I'm looking for something cool like that. And now I'm going to come back over here, and on this part, I'm going to do a control V, and I'm just going to call this Taurus, because that's actually what it is. It's, that's the shape of it. And this part I'm going to rotate like so. And this part I want to also have that sort of, sort of like a mixture, something like, um, I mean, I could have it be that's good enough, OK. Uh, maybe I'll just go for that sort of burnt part again. And again, layer, layer mask, reveal all, and I can just paint the rest of this stuff out. to this as I can. All right, that works. And just make sure I don't have any accidental overlapping, whatever. That's fine. And now I'll come back over here. And it's got... It's, it's good enough for now. And then I'll come back over here. And I got one last part. And for that last part, I'm going to use this one, Control-C. And come back here, and Control-V. And this one, I don't know, I kind of like want it to be this part. And now, layer, layer mask. This one's torch holder. And layer, layer mask, reveal all. And I'm just going to use my brush tool and just paint out what I don't need. So I gotta make sure I get it off of as best as I can this part right here on my torch base I think I called it. And that's good enough. And now just to clarify um, I'll just make this a huge brush I'm just going to paint the background black. Now, I've got this entire thing complete. I'm going to go back into my Lambert here, and I'm going to go Control Shift S. And oh wait, these are this is torch holder. Oh. Uh, ah. burn place. That's where everything burns. So, all right. So, I'll come back here really quickly. It'll refresh. And now I'm going to save it out. And now I'm going to locate where I want to save it to. Right over here. And I'm going to save it as a PSB. It's a large texture file. And I'm also going to save it uh, torch 
example torch midterm dot PSB and I can just save that out I'm also going to save this out once you save it out though it's gonna break connections by the way so it'll no longer have the connection to it so you'll have if you want to refresh it close out of it and now double click on it and now it'll be refreshed I'm also gonna save it out as a PSD and torch midterm and I'm, now I'm going to save it out as a TGA torch midterm save 32 bits okay and I'm going to go into Maya now I'm going to assign a new material I'm going to assign an Arnold shader and I'm going to do AI standard surface. From here, I'm going to go to base in, in my base tab here and go to color, go to file, locate it. And here, oh, just a second. And here, torch midterm.tga, click open. I already have six enabled. If you have if it looks like this still, tap six on your keyboard. And you'll see I've got this pretty neat looking texture. I wanted it to look more burned in here in the center uh, spot. Um, and I think it turned out really, really good. So um, one thing I can also do. Here's a quick little trick. If I select this entire edge loop, I'm going to hold shift, right click. I'm going to go to soften edge and harden edge. And now when I look at it, you'll see I've got that hard edge in there. Um, same thing with beveling. If I wanted to bevel and stuff to make it look like a harder edge. But this is pretty low poly. Um, <clears throat> it could be lower, but it's totally fine for what it is. And... Um, yeah, like right in here, all of this could be way less because I have this at 8. I just forgot to change that to 8, but I'm totally fine with it. Um, but anyway, so that's my torch that I built. Uh, I textured as well. I've got separate textures on everything. Um, I hope uh, you enjoyed the uh, video. Um, one last thing. Let's just say you wanted to change this around. Ah, you're not gonna be able to do it just right because you wanted to use the other side of the texture I don't think you'll be able to do it because unless without breaking the object so I'm just gonna leave it as is I think that's good enough and um, one last thing before I close this video out I'm gonna go back into Photoshop and I'm gonna take all of these layers and I'm going to I'll even include the background I'm gonna duplicate them and I'm going to press Control and E, and this is going to be Torch Normal. I'm going to go to Filter, 3D, <clears throat> Generate Normal Map, and <clears throat> excuse me, one second. And in here, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. And in here, um. I need to go ahead and adjust this. I have the detail scale at like 85. I'm going to bring that down because that's like crazy high. And so let's, if you bring it up to like 100, you're going to see that that's not going to look right when I apply it to my model. You can sort of see the 3D depth on it already. <clears throat> so um, I'm going to bring it down to like 25. Maybe even 20. I think I'll I'll just work with 20 on this one. And I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And now I'm going to do a... If you're worried about how to get back to your layers, just go over here. And one quick little note. Let's just say I apply this and I don't like it. A really fast way is just to duplicate your layer to make it have more depth. And do... 
overlay and you'll notice you get more depth and it just sort of adds to it so it's just a quick little trick but I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one and I'm just gonna leave it like this I'm gonna press control shift s I'm gonna save this one out as a TGA and torch underscore normal underscore midterm okay and now back in Maya I'm going to uh, go to my attribute editor I'm gonna edit delete all by type history I'm gonna name this material torch material and here I'm just gonna rename my file here this is gonna be torch diffuse file um, and then in here I'm gonna go to geometry located down here under geometry and I'm gonna go ahead and assign a bump map I'm gonna go to file and I'm gonna switch this to tangent space normals and I'm gonna go to file one and I'm gonna locate my normal and click open and now when I take a look at this you notice it right when you turn it on uh, that you'll get a little bit more depth and if you want to increase it just go ahead and increase create a new normal map if you'd like but I'm, I'm okay with it like this um, I don't want it to be too much um, and then going back in here but you will see on the back side which is why I put it here the seam that I was talking about you don't see it so much here but you definitely see it right here and we can fix that in Photoshop and I'll I'll show you one last thing um, but it's not always a guarantee fix uh, but I'll do my best to try to show you how to see seam that best I can um, I'm gonna go back into Photoshop I'm gonna duplicate all these again control E and this will be torch spec Euler and I'm gonna go to filter uh, or excuse me image adjustments I'm gonna just do black and white and auto that's fine okay and I'm gonna bring it up top and now I'm also going to because it's way too bright brightness contrast I know it's metal but it's still too bright I can bring the contrast higher maybe a little bit brighter and I think that's a pretty good mix right there I think that'll do and I'll click OK and I'm gonna save this one out as TGA on torch underscore spec underscore midterm and now back over here I don't think I needed to hit the alpha channels on that I hope not um, I'm gonna go back to specular and go to color and go to file and click image name and go to torch spec and click open and now according to my lighting it will adjust the lights um, so anyway like this doesn't shine as much um, but anyway that's that and while I have the file open and it did cross my mind uh, I'm gonna also yes yeah, if I just close this yes save so if back in here if this works I would have to redo all those maps but I'm gonna show you a trick if this works it's great if not I'm not gonna sweat it but I wanted to see if I can show you I'm just zooming in pressing control plus I'm just gonna rotate around the best that I can and I'm gonna select I'm gonna just try to find that seam especially where it's really harsh and use my no not that one I may not even have it in the 3D layer, so I may not even be able to do it. I think they used to. I'm looking for the spot healing brush, but I don't know if they have it anymore. They probably don't have it in the 3D layer, so 
I'll try and show you with the clone stamp. If I hold Alt, see if this works. Eh. It's not working how I wanted. So anyway, um, the best way to try to fix something like that is with the spot healing brush. But I don't know if you'll if you can do it. Let me try one more time. And if I switch to maybe if I switch to essentials, this is in a 3D layer. And I go to my spot healing brush. Let's see if it'll go right on there. No, it didn't work. So that's kind of the best way. I'll switch back to 3D. The best way that I know of to do it. Maybe if I click no. Yeah, I won't be able to do it without the spot healing brush, but I thought I know I'm pretty sure it used to be on here, but who knows? Um anyway that's all I've got for you um, I hope you enjoyed this video um, and that's uh, texturing in Photoshop um, on I just used two different ones um, and applying it in Maya using an Arnold surface shader so anyway I hope you uh, liked it I'm, I'm just repeating myself I'm sorry so um, Thanks uh, again for watching. Um, shoot me a message if you have any questions. And uh, yeah, that's just another way you can go ahead and uh, continue um, texturing.